long day, I got a lot to say. It feels like I'm carrying a two-ton weight. I go to see a friend. Hello, I'm Monsignor Patrick Winslow. And I am Father Matthew Cowth. And we are speaking from the rooftop. A podcast brought to you by Tan Books, in which we invite you to join our conversation out here in the open air where we look out upon the world around us from the rooftop of the church and share with you what we see. Makes me wanna scream from the rooftop to the till I know Hello there. Hello, how are you? I'm well, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Well, I'm so glad How can you not do fantastic when, be, be fantastic when... You have not just, of course, the faith, our Lord, the saints, all good things and grace, but you also have October. I know. It's just gorgeous. It, <laughs> right now at this airing of this session, it is mid-October and the crisp is in the air. Yep. Uh, which it, means even for us, in North Carolina. Which means for us, the Christmas is almost in the air. <laughs> oh, you have no idea. By the window and I are already shipping each other back and forth across the... Uh, you know the interwebs. The interwebs, illusions, CDs, and illusions. Do you call them CDs still? I don't. What do you know call that. them when it's all streamed? Uh, music. Music. You know. Covers. Um, we're, we're we're stocking the arsenal. We are for the Christmas music. We are. We um, love the atmosphere, and we we love curating the environment. But yeah. You can't wait to just set up on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve. That's not going to work. You need the whole season. To I need mean, a whole season to, to curate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not going against the law. It's Advent. I no, get it's it. Advent. I am preparing. This is how I. Prepare. I am preparing the I way. I put up lights. I put up trees. I put up leaves. Absolutely. I listen to Christmas music. All is a way of preparing. Amen. Amen. And then when Christmas comes, I stop preparing, and that's the difference and between Advent it. and Christmas. That's right. <laughs> And I enjoy it. So, I immerse myself. All those Scrooges out there that says we can't have any yep. Christmas food beforehand. Out with you. Bah humbug to you. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You get these zealots of in, in Catholic circles about Father. How how dare you listen? It's to Advent. It? <laughs> it's like okay, it is indeed. <laughs> but and I get it. I get it. I get it. I mean, there's always in the church that wonderful time of preparation to be able to enjoy something. Sure. Fasting for the purpose of feasting. It's all great. Well, I actually like. Put the, the baby Jesus away. And it comes out at Christmas month or Christmas Eve. Yes. You can't put the baby Jesus away. No, but I can answer. certainly put up a few figurines of the Nativity. You better believe All of it. whom are waiting. They're waiting. All of them. They're preparing. Every one of them. So didn't we leave with a teaser the last time we talked? We did. We were speaking about um, proper vacationing. and Oh, the right disposition. If memory serves, you even made allusion... To one of our first trips. That's true. And that became paradigmatic for me, that first trip, because I had never quite done something like that. And just to set it up for you all, um, uh, I was ordained in the year 2000, January 3rd of 2000, as was another priest friend of ours. As June. You were ordained in June. June. I thought you were going to say January. No, no. It, it, for the rest June. of the church, it felt like, it felt like winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, June 3rd, 2000. It was a jubilee year, and we had set up a, a pilgrimage. So we decided that I had made a promise to St. Catherine if she came through on, on a certain couple of things for me that I needed for my own personal growth and, and sanctification, um, one of many things, <laughs> that uh, I would go make a pilgrimage to see her in Siena. And so you and some of other our friends jumped on this trip, and we went away right after ordination. Um, and it became paradigmatic for me because it was the, the, the method was the same every day. And the way I ended up sort of calling it and translating this for other future seminarians and priests is when you go on a pilgrimage, you have to grease the skids. And after you grease the skids, watch where those skis take you. So in other words, you have to... You're mixing to spend... a few metaphors, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Greasing the skids. The skids, not skis. Well, it's kind of the same thing. <laughs> What's the difference? Is it like a skid where you like, slide boxes on them or something like that? Yeah, but that's the same thing. It's it's a, it's a well, thing that... I don't that... ski on a skid. Well, okay. Grease your skis. <laughs> put, wax your wax skis. Your skis. <laughs> Whatever. Listen, I think the mixed metaphors work. 
I just, you know, there may be some tender yeah. ears. Or so not you want to make things sleep. such crass. How do you put analogy. things? How do you put things um, to make things smooth on a trip? Which right. Doesn't mean you're not going to suffer, right. and it doesn't mean your plans are going to get ruined here and there. Things you expected, things you hoped for, whatever. But if you, the greasing or the waxing or whatever, that I found, that we found on that trip, was we would spend a significant amount of time in the morning in prayer. That's it. Not going to go see this, that, or the other. We're going to pray. Which was consistent with our lives. With, with, with our lives. I yeah. mean, this wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like we didn't pray and we went on vacation right. to pray, right? No, this was carrying right. our prayer life with us on vacation, yeah. not skimping on it, and maybe even being more gratuitous more because gratuitous. we're in some holy place. Right. And so, as in our lives, we spend a lot of time in prayer in the morning, and then we watch how the graces of the day unfold relative to taking care of people right. and the issues that come before us, the, the various things Unexpected situations. Um, whereas on a pilgrimage or a vacation, um, you're really looking to see you're sort of playing, really. You're just sort of playing with God um, because you you don't know what he's going to unfold for you. You're usually in a different context. Yep. It's not about necessarily the people that are coming to your office, to the church, mm-hmm. whatever else. It's you. you what sometimes is he in a different show culture, you? different situation, different context. Yeah. All sorts of different people. Yeah. And you have, and the thing is you have expectations. Everybody brings certain expectations to vacation. I don't care if it's as simple as I'm going to read a book or... I am not going to read anything, yep. you know, because I read too much all the time and I need to get out of my head. Yep. Yep. You know, whatever the case may be, we sometimes have expectations uh, that are that are grandiose. And we do this around holidays as well. So we have a very high expectations and they're extremely difficult to achieve. People spend tons of money trying to achieve them. But if your hearts are wrapped around those things, in the end, they usually yes. fail. Uh, and we Which feel this is a different approach. It's very different. Because you do kind of aim high, but not wrapping your heart around or your expectations around events that are going to give back certain dividends that you're looking to receive. Yeah. But rather, you're leaving a wide berth to see what God has in store. Yes. But I want to do this sort of thing, and I want this sort of activity and I'm going to set the stage for it, but I'm letting go of the expectations. I may have some hopes, right? But it's different because you know the, the hope typically is about something uh, more noble, about something um, less specific. Whereas expectations tend to be very specific, yeah. and sometimes they have nothing to do with anything noble. And as you say, when you bring your prayer life with you, when you bring your faith with you, when you bring all those things who you are with you that make you hurt, you don't vacation from those things. They are a part of you. Yeah. And they're meant to go with you. Yeah. Then horizons open up. Opportunities open up. The most extraordinary thing happens. Yes. And that's just it. And, and, that, and that's really fun. Because you're, you're, you're playing this quote-unquote game with God. Like, what do you want to manifest to me? How do you, I mean, because he loves you. How does he want to love you? Um, and how, what, is he, what does he want for you? And so we would typically, in the course of a day, begin to find a theme. Like, you would see things unfold in a certain way. And you didn't get perturbed anymore if you encountered an obstacle because you realized it was like a treasure hunt. And that just that's just the next clue uh, to the treasure hunt. You know, one simple example, if you recall, we were we were trying to spend some time in Florence and all the expectations that one of our brethren on the trip had about Florence, his idyllic city and the art in Florence, et cetera, et cetera. We get to Florence not knowing it was the feast of St. John the Baptist. Where there, it was all about the football games, and soccer, the soccer, everywhere. And, and everybody was off. It's their was pa- patrimonial feast. And yeah. So you couldn't get a hotel. You couldn't, you couldn't do anything. And so it was so crazy. We ended up leaving. We didn't stay in the city. And it was irritating. Yeah. But it, it was genuinely uncomfortable. We came all this way to see Florence so we can't see Florence. Right. And we're being, we're being uh, kind of turned away at every turn. It became a practical nightmare. Of course, we did some things that were irritating to the locals of Florence. Well, some, some streets and some bridges we're not supposed <laughs> to drive on. But we took, we took grand liberties being <laughs> we, It looked Americans. like a road. 
you know, <laughs> driving we're over, we're driving a sea over of people. Yeah, driving over the most famous bridge in Italy. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> now you get we over nearly the, turned on to by that. the uh, gendarme. Yeah, it was unbelievable. But you know, even for example, uh, he used to say you can't get a bad meal in Italy. Well, that's not true anymore. Can. Yeah, back then was one of the first times we've experienced a bad a bad meal in Italy. When we went to some restaurant in Florence, and it was not good. Yeah. And it's not like we were uh, going in there with bad attitudes about the food. We, we did have expectations, but they were reasonable expectations. Yeah. So we kept meeting these obstacles. Can't really get a decent place to stay. Um, it was weird. It was kind of like nouveau and icky and whatever. Um, the food wasn't good. The, the noise was high. You couldn't get into the we churches. Left we left hungry. But it was these little indications of, I don't, I don't want you here right now. Right. And we just we, pushed out. we switched the paradigm. We said, "Okay, all right, that's it. He's God has chosen. Where are we going?" Yeah. We got in the car. We drove. Mm-hmm. We made it up to a town. We didn't know what the town was. Um, when we say up. We mean up because it's sort of the, the yeah, mountainside yeah. around Florence. So we went up to Fiesoli, which is the mother town of yeah. of Florence. We didn't know that. And it looks over. And it looks over Florence. Um, so we kept going. Up and up and up, if you recall. Yes, I do. And we saw some sign for a church. For a church, of... and kept driving and driving yeah. and driving and driving. Some sign to a monastery. A monastery, and we get in the middle of what we considered nowhere, on top of this mountain, and we're praying in this um, chapel there, and we see seven skulls. And trying to make the connection to what in the world seven skulls? Who do we know? Seven skulls. Seven skulls. But now, before we realize. Uh, what that is we were kind of silly going into the chapel because we at that point had embraced the ridiculousness of having been driven out of Florence, having a bad meal like we went from where we could have gone the route of being irritable annoyed let's call this a day let's get out of the car i need my own room right I mean, it would have been so easy to go the frustrated route which happens a lot in vacation yeah, it does with people, but we didn't, and I it really was the punchy like, route. We went, you know what? We're on this ride with God and with each other, and yeah. we, we prayed. What is in store now? And it got ridiculous. Well, and we started you, to embrace the humor. And, of and it. Do you remember what got it ridiculous? When it we were the, it was we were vigil, hungry, it was the vigil of Corpus Christi. Yes, and we were and hungry. So all the antiphons were starving are about food. <laughs> it was all about food and about feeding our hunger, and we had a guy. Who, let's just say he has a wonderful affection for food, although we all do. And his stomach was growling and we're praying the prayers and we're talking. It was all about food and feeding <laughs> and hunger. And we just couldn't stop laughing. We couldn't stop laughing. Yeah. So we had to leave. And after we noticed these seven skulls. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we realized where we are. We went to yeah. the bookstore. bookstore. And the bookstore apparently was the original chapel space for this monastery. Yeah. And we see these holy cards and these holy images, and we start to realize this has to do with seven men. And you can take it from there. I just remember when the revelation hit that these are the seven Servites, the Servite order, the Servite fathers. Now, most people probably and listen so what don't that know. is, way back when, in the Middle Ages, seven men who were part of a confraternity of Our Lady were having difficulty living in Florence. Because Florence was becoming overrun with with chaos, with the merchants and the, the chaos. Yeah, just the licentiousness, etc. Mm-hmm. Um, you can read about it when you read it, if you ever read Dante's Divine Comedies. He's pretty vocal about the the lasciviousness of the times in, in Florence. And so they decide to leave, and they're walking up the mountain, and they see Our Lady, right. and she just keeps climbing, and they keep climbing after her, and they get to the very top. And she says, here you will build. And they built this monastery. Now, for us, when we were in seminary, the seven Servites were kind of a lodestar for us because we thought about our, our love for Our Lady, our, our, our devotion to her, our connectedness to her, wanting to leave lives of chaos and, and do what the seven Servites did. It was so incredibly... Go to a holy place. Yeah, it was so incredibly inspiring. And... It was, we were reminded every year because there's a feast day, 
and that feast February. day is represented in the Liturgy of the Hours, right. where the office of reading, you will read about these things. Yeah. Right. So that's how we learned about it. Yeah, it was the it, first time I ever learned it. It kind of became for us office. commonly in seminary a, a bit of our own personal feast day. So the fact that we had undergone on a mini scale exactly what those we were driven out by the chaos of Florence <laughs> up the mountain. Of course, we weren't following Our Lady. We just we maybe she was leading. Yeah. But we then found our way to this monastery. We were in the chapel looking at the skulls. We didn't know who they were, and we likely would have just left the chapel, gotten our car, and gone. Yeah. But because we were driven out by this holy humor, uh, we couldn't finish our prayers. <laughs> Which wouldn't have happened if we had had a good lunch. <laughs> if we had had a good lunch, if we hadn't embraced the ridiculousness yep. of the moment, we were just, it, it, the whole thing turned to humor. And we, it was embarrassing because here we were, like laughing in this chapel. We had to leave because we didn't want people to think we were being disrespectful because we right. weren't trying. And so we went to the first place we could go into and it happened to be the bookstore, which was the original chapel. So we went from the quote unquote new chapel to the mm. original chapel area and they marked it where we learned that these were the seven servants. Yeah. I mean what a gift all that was. What a gift all that we was. We would have never known any of it. Nope. Didn't had have we a clue not where those had, guys were. Had we not been driven out of that chapel, had we not been driven out of the city, had we not uh embraced a uh, this more a more humorous and fun and lighthearted spirit rather Adventure. than a bitter or anger. Right. Or let's just give it all up yeah. and be frustrated. Yeah. Spirit. So it made all the difference. Yeah. It's a great way to spend a vacation. It is. And that is the, the right way. I mean, you, you know, you talk to family and they, you know, they're leading their, their, their little ones and themselves off on a vacation. You know, for some of them, maybe think it's just exhausting, right? Because yeah. I'm concierge to how many kids, yeah. you know, it's expensive, it's exhausting, it may be difficult. But some parents, although maybe they, they, they can embrace all of that fairly well, but still it's difficult because new situations, new environments, everyone has high expectations, their hearts are, around certain, hearts are wrapped around certain outcomes that may not be easily delivered. And it can be really tense. Yeah. Vacations can be tense and it's not what you want. Yeah. You know, it's, it, so the rule about Greece and the skids then, what, what that ultimately means is that you go where you can slide. Yeah. And it's okay if there's a path that's blocked off for you. Um, I just had an experience this summer. I was I had the fortune of of hiking in the Dolomites, which is my favorite place in the world, the northern uh, northern Alps of, of Italy. After the hike, uh, the pre- a priest friend of mine, uh, we, we went to go pay homage to Saint Saint Augustine, who's in northern Italy. And so we spent the day in his city where he's buried, and. None of us, neither of us wanted to stay in that city. Like everything was blocked. Mm -hmm. Everything was just wrong. And you felt it. Like we prayed there, but something's wrong. And we couldn't quite settle in. So we could just get back in the car and go, oh, we're close to Milan. Maybe we'll just go to Milan, go see St. Ambrose tomorrow, Um, Mm -hmm. go to the cathedral. It's beautiful, et cetera, et cetera. We get to Milan. Everything is closed. The place is chaotic. But we've done this so many times now. Right. We're like, well, let's just stop into a chapel. We'll grease, put some more grease on the skids. Right, and see and where we'll we end up. On. Yeah. We ended up in uh, in Bergamo, which I had never been to. Um, an incredible town and beautiful, beautiful churches uh, mm-hmm. in the top city. And so then we had the whole next day just to pray in Bergamo, and it was unbelievable. And I, I could I could go on about sure. all the graces that happened that day, people we encountered, people we met, people right. we helped. Wonderful. We just wouldn't have been there. Yeah, just following whatever God wants us to do. That's right. To go. And it wasn't it wasn't as though you just oh, my vacation is I'm just going to land somewhere, right? right. I mean, you had some idea, yeah. you had some plan, and and you had some reasonable expectations. It's probably the best way to put it. Yeah. But it was wide open with respect to all right. The, there are going to be some twists and turns and frictions and. All of that can lead to some unexpected beautiful gifts through the hand of divine providence. And I think that really is the best way to approach a vacation. And I think it's the right way in a certain sense, as I think I was saying in the last, uh, in the last episode when we were talking, that over the course of my many years, you, you learn or I have learned how to vacation better. Yep. And I think it is something that you should, people should be thinking yeah. about. What are you looking for? Yeah. And you got to change that. If you're looking for... I need peace. Well, yeah. I need the X, Y, or Z, this experience, this whatever, this food. How about I need to spend time with you, Lord? Mm-hmm. 
And that doesn't mean I'm in church all the time. Right. But I want to spend time with you. I want to see what you've got up your sleeve, so to speak. And I'm going to be looking for you. Right. And you show me what you want to show me. Yeah. Or it can be also, I want to spend time with my family. Sure. I want to spend time with my friends. Um, That's all included. It's all included. You know, it, it's not neither or. It can be all layered in there. But certainly your spiritual life and your prayer life, they travel with you. Yep. You don't vacation from them. And the same thing, you for know. For better or worse. For better or worse. <laughs> and the same thing with your family. I always find it interesting that people, when they go to places in Europe in particular, but anywhere really, they visit churches. Yeah. Isn't that extraordinary? It is. I mean, it, it shouldn't surprise me. Um, I mean, in, in Europe, of course, they're the most beautiful thing to see. They are beautiful. But there's something about the soul of a place uh, of, of, a, of a region yeah. that's reflected also uh, in, a, in, a, in a church I had it, someone recently complain yeah. about that someone from Northeast mm-hmm. as you're from the Northeast and because Catholicism is relatively new to this area mm-hmm. we don't have old beautiful churches right we have lots of new churches that are functional know, they're functional and so someone I know had just experienced them um, some particular suffering. This was related to me, a comment that the person made, because the person went after experiencing this or hearing about this this tragedy, went to go find a church. And at the end of the day, the comment was, why don't you people have any churches that mm-hmm. we can go to? Like big churches with right. corners, with, with shadows, with places you can sit right. on a column and, and tuck yourself in and kind of hide from things and sure. that inspires a certain majesty and beauty. I don't want to go out and rant on architecture right now, but I thought that was so interesting. A person that doesn't really go to church, right, but lives in, the, that. lives in the Northeast, and when they're there, if they experience something, they go right to that church. Of course. You know, whichever the thousands of that are up there that are not closed by now. but um, It's true. And they are, they are beautiful. And for those who've lived in those types of places, you took it for granted when you were young that you had these places that you could go. Yeah. And uh, now we're in, a, we're in a part of the world that was very much part and parcel to the Bible Belt. It didn't have a lot of Catholic presence, a yeah. large Catholic presence. The footprint of the Catholic presence is now growing. It's making a big difference. Yep. Uh, but we have to meet that growth. Now, what what our... Um, are, we, are, we, are we ramping this up for a, a, an advertisement for the Seminary Chapel? Well, there... <laughs> Frederick would You're be happy so about good that. at your job. Frederick would be happy about that. It's true. So if you need those kinds of churches, it, I have if the you want to be part you can contribute to of the late apostolic movement of the southeast, um, we're, we're laying Joseph College Seminary Chapel. Campaign. We're laying the foundations, and we're doing it with churches with the seminary, yep, yep. and you know you're raising funds for the seminary chapel, which is uh, at, uh, aspiring to meet not only the needs of the men at the seminary. But to be able to house guests and visitors yes. who could come, Places to who pray. can find a place to pray and a place to have a talk, a lunch. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, it takes resources. It takes people to give, you know, uh, to be able to have these places. But they're so important. I think of Our Lady, um, you know, who indicated at Lourdes or indicated to Fatima to the children to have a, a church built in these locations. Yeah, right. You know, have processions, she didn't take say collections. Just a functional thing. I want a church. I want a church. You know, yeah. you need to have this, and then have processions, and so you need to have that place. That Do you remember space. when we were at St. Thomas? You thought about because part of the part of the motivation for a number of things we did, as as we articulated, was get boots on the ground, right? Um, and you were thinking about having a coffee shop because we lived right yeah. across from UNC Charlotte, right? Just to draw kids, give them. A place I wanted to some be. traffic, traffic uh, that would move either through our 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 uh, site. Or buy our site, yep. because you can't exactly take the church and move it around, but you can bring people toward you and hope that that interaction would lead people to actually opening the door, walking inside, uh, mm-hmm. saying a prayer, asking some questions. Yep. And so, yeah, it's one of those things I wanted to do. I still want to do it. I'm just not. I'm in a position to be supportive of that project. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm in a position to say, how about we put a coffee bar at St. Joseph's? <laughs> well, that's right. There you go. That'll drop some traffic. We got plenty of coffee there. Yeah. Well, before we go, Father. Yes. Um, speaking of architecture yeah. and churches and things of that nature, I had a little breakthrough their day with my architects. Oh, good. So that usually means more, more money. money. 
<laughs> it's so true. <laughs> so I'm on air now. Uh-huh. Um, pushing for permission to get something done for people but, to help you to pay for your breakthrough. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty it's a pretty little simple one, but clever. We had a really hard time trying to figure out how to do a certain kind of roofing that attaches to the side of the chapel, comes down and creates one of the cloister walls. Mm-hmm. So you walk underneath it, it's covered. Mm-hmm. And as we're looking at different materials, different way to keep the thing um, simple and thin, so as not to block light from getting into the chapel, I just looked at the guys and like, why don't we just pave it why why wouldn't that become a terrace how much more steel mm-hmm. do i need for it to be a terrace now there is a little bit more cost mm. um, but as opposed to can you imagine a tpo or a or a, a rock roof up there right. or something stupid there's there's a door right off the kitchen you could, you put could in go out there and go outside yeah so Love this is idea. my new little breakthrough on that one. Oh, another else, rooftop? Everything else, exactly. Another I'm not, that's what I would bring rooftop. it up. It's another rooftop. All right. Mark your calendars, folks. Well, don't. We'll have to give you If you, you love the rooftop, pay for Father Calvin for the Winter's <laughs> New Rooftop. <laughs> that's true. We could have the rooftop listeners uh, dedicate or make uh, restricted donations to, to that the rooftop, portion. And we can have you out for, for a mass, for prayer, and you can come see the rooftop. That's right. And we can make sure that we have a, a special inaugural uh, rooftop, rooftop session. pod set. Yeah, session. That'd be awesome. That would be a lot of fun. Fantastic. We'll even maybe get some pictures. Yeah. All definitely. right, so my final before we go. Um, so I had to stop at the pharmacy before I came into the office today. And I see a whole center section dedicated to Halloween candy. <laughs> now, that's, now the, the predictable thing is how I would be drawn toward it, right? But what really caught my attention is opposite the Halloween candy or Christmas items. Wow. Christmas candy. It's bled in on the other side of Halloween now. Unbelievable. They had, I mean, even I was aghast. I felt like something was amiss. We've, we've, we've come to appreciate the fact that after, Candy canes. Yeah. You know, M&M filled uh, candy cane how tubes. Many, how many did you buy? That's not the point. The point, <laughs> I you know, I nearly grabbed the the, the Reese's peanut butter cup Christmas bells because I'm like, oh, those are the perfect size, you know, because you know the the cups you have to deal with that little cup paper. No, no, no. But if I have the bell, I can just take the foil off. Yeah. You're done. I'm done. Yeah. I don't. I don't have to lick the, the paper. commitment. Isn't as long. <laughs> I don't have to lick the paper. <laughs> you, you know, I'm not sure you're ever obliged to lick the paper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to waste. So, you know, I was I was taken aback, but I thought to myself, I almost took a picture. I said, I have to show Cal this. Yeah. Uh, because he's not going to believe it. I think was we're trying to music playing? There was not music playing. Okay. Uh, but I, I, but it was like a nightmare before Christmas, you know, that, 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 that cartoon thingy or claymation movie oh, that's thing. Great. I had Christmas and Halloween on either side of me and it felt weird. I have to say that. That said, as you know, I'm in support of yes. getting ready for Christmas yes. early. It's how I celebrate. I think that maybe in the next session we should, if we remember again, the we types should probably of things talk we do. about how do we prepare properly yeah. for Christmas. Oh, that's good. Spiritually yeah. and around the home. Excellent. All right. God bless you all. Have a great week. Ciao, ciao. Makes me wanna scream Thanks for listening to this episode of From the Rooftop. For updates about new episodes, special guests, and exclusive deals for From the Rooftop listeners, sign up at rooftoppodcast.com. And remember, for more great ways to deepen your faith, check out all the spiritual resources available at tanbooks.com. And we'll see you again next time. From the Rooftop. Rooftop.